Netted in the warm, coastal waters of most tropical and subtropical zones throughout the world, mullet are found in the Western Atlantic Ocean from Nova Scotia, Canada, south to Brazil, including the Gulf of Mexico. In the Eastern Atlantic Ocean, the striped mullet occurs from the Bay of Biscay in France to South Africa, including the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. The Eastern Pacific Ocean Range includes Southern California south to Chile. In addition to the striped mullet of America's Gulf Coast, the leaner silver mullet frequents the Atlantic coast of Florida. However, in some cases, a mullet is not a mullet. For example, the red mullet, or roger, found primarily in the Mediterranean, is actually a goatfish and not a mullet at all. Europeans have fished for mullet since the time of the ancient Greeks. Called mugle by the Romans, mullet to this day remains a culinary mainstay throughout the Mediterranean. Mullet is a popular food source in Hawaii and Japan and throughout Asia as well, where female mullet are coveted for their egg sacs, or roe. In America, the mullet has always been considered primarily a southern fish and found along the coasts of the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and here in Florida. So you've probably heard that mullet is a urihaline fish. That means it can withstand various salinities from full strength seawater, and in mullet's case, all the way down to pure fresh water. And its life cycle is kind of built around the strategy of spawning in the sea and then growing up in the estuary and in fresh water in particular. So the juveniles, the larvae actually, sort of make their way towards the coast and, and then the juveniles tend to settle out in lower salinity water. So not sure exactly what the cues are that move them in that direction. It could be salinity, it could be the nutrients that they're seeking, but for whatever reason they are moving steadily towards lower and lower salinity as juveniles. And then they'll grow up to where well, they get, they, they grow around maybe eight to nine inches in total length a year. So that um, by the time they're two to three years old, they're mature and, and they're getting ready to spawn. And in Florida, they begin to spawn in the early fall, October, and they spawn through January. And the main months are November and December. And when they spawn, they tend to school up and move offshore to the deeper water where they spawn. And at that time, the fishery is very active because as you can imagine, when they're schooling together, they're a bit easier to catch. So they cannot spawn this species in freshwater. They actually must go out to sea to spawn. If you look at the goals before the regulations began in the 90s, there was concern that the spawning population size was well below what was considered sustainable. And in Florida, we have a statistic we call the spawning potential ratio. It's essentially a proxy for the amount of mullet in the water needed in order to sustain that fishery. And the best guess is around 35%. In the late 80s and really early 90s, it, the best estimates were that it was down around 26%. So the regulations were geared towards bringing that population up to the spawning potential ratio at or above 35%. The state has been hugely successful in, in doing that. In, in part because of the citizens initiative and the net ban that the state put in place. And you know that that spawning potential ratio now is about 45 to 50 percent. So it's well above the level that would be considered you know needed for sustainability. 